Hey guys, it's Craig Nakamoto with part two of our A-Frame video series. Just wanted to talk about some of the work we've done to the A-Frame since we completed the last video. We were out last summer for another week and this summer for a full month. I'll just start by listing the projects I'm going to cover in this video. So one is a loft floor you can see here, the Akasugi wood burning. Two is the folding attic ladder which saved a lot of space and I absolutely loved it. Three is a solar vent fan. The loft was getting pretty hot during the heat wave and I realized that we definitely need some ventilation up there. We also built some counters in the kitchen and we also added a bathroom in the back left corner of the A-frame right here. And that, uh, right now we're experimenting with sawdust composting toilets. You can see we also added a sink, running water. I had to build a trench from the A-frame over to the shed. And that was to run the water line and the electricity. A lot of people commented about the foundation because it was built on frozen ground and there's no pilings. So I discussed that as well after a year and a half and a good two summers and a winter. We also built a ramp off the back for wheelchair access and finish some of the trim. So first off, the loft floor. This technique is called yakasugi and it's a Japanese uh, method of preserving wood. They would normally use this on the exterior, wood use on the exterior of the house. They would burn it and then treat it. Uh, I find that it's an excellent technique to, you know, um, finish wood for any application really. Burning it just brings out the grain really nicely. In this case, it's just a piece of three quarter inch plywood, but it had a really nice uh, grain on the front with lots of knots. This is just a weed torch that I bought at Home Depot, and right now it's just hooked into a small propane tank, which lasts a very long time, actually. And as you can see, you just go over it over and over again until you get it fairly even and as dark or as light as you want. And once that's done, you just treat it. I just used a water-based floor of erythane. I filled in some of those cracks with some plastic wood. Made sure I had all the screws in place. I applied a bit of trim around the outside. You do have to be careful uh, if you're going to do this that there aren't any spots for the erythane to pour out because that's typically what you do is just pour a pool of erythane out and then you just spread it around with a, a squeegee. So here I am just putting some trim on and then I just clean everything up. Vacuum it. Give it a good stir, pour it, and then yeah, you just spread it all out with the squeegee. It goes very quickly. Uh, and then, you know, you want to put at least at least three three thin coats on and you end up with a very nice hard surface and the Yakasugi leaves a really nice design. Afterwards, if you wanted to install hardwood or tile or anything else, you still could. It's just still just wood. So it's a fantastic short or long term solution. Before I started working on the attic ladder, I also wanted to get this ceiling finished up, so I sealed up the spaces around the loft floor and then started insulating it. It's completely optional. This is just between the main floor and the loft, but other people I talked to that that have done this said that it made a huge difference in the sound. If you've got kids running around up top, for example, it just uh, it just quiets everything down. And considering the cost, it was it wasn't that big a deal, and really not that much work. Next up is the folding attic ladder. So I did not plan for this ahead of time. I mean, I, I thought about it, and I figured I would probably do it, and I guess I just assumed that it was going to fit between those those double joists, floor joists that were in the loft, uh, and it didn't, and it it created a significant amount of extra work trying to get this opening the right size. You can see here I'm using every saw I've got with me <laughs> to cut um, cut this opening. So if you're planning on building an A-frame or any structure that has a loft uh, or an attic and you want to install 
a folding attic ladder, which I do strongly recommend, you definitely want to make sure that the opening is, is planned from the beginning. And that will save you, you know, a good two or three hours of pain, which you're witnessing right here. Now, the attic ladder comes fully assembled, uh, at least the one I bought. You just, once you've got the opening, you put a couple of temporary boards underneath and you screw them up onto the ceiling below. You just drop the unit down, put the spacers in, and uh, screw it on. It's, it's really, really straightforward. And they are not cheap. This one I got at uh, Home Depot. They had to order it in. It wasn't available in the store, but they, they ordered it in quite quickly and I was very impressed with it. So you'll see it here. Yeah, back row. Uh, so you unpackage it, drop it in, put in some spacers, put some screws in in the marked spots, fold it down, and then there's some detailed instructions on how to measure and cut the bottom of the ladder so that it fits your ceiling perfectly. Obviously you're going to want to be very careful with this part because if you cut it too short, you're out of luck. Anyway, I cut it and it worked very nicely. I had to actually quite qu cut quite a bit of the ladder off to make it fit. So this is just a little walkthrough video showing the folding ladder. Pretty narrow but rock solid. And then here you can see the solar vent fan that I installed. and it's got a battery back up and there's a little solar panel up on the roof above that's hooked in there. And basically that just sucks the hot air out of the loft, pulls the cooler air up from below. This gives you kind of a view of the guardrail and, and the ladder from the top. And then I'm just going to show how the ladder folds up. In this video I use one hand. Normally you would use two hands and it's a little smoother, but oops. Yeah, it just it folds three ways. And then you can just lift it up. Now it'll stay up there by itself because of the springs, but if you want you can use the, the little tool it comes with to actually press it right up into the ceiling and lock it in place planning on putting some boards on the bottom there so it matches the rest of the ceiling. I used a broom holder to make a spot to keep that thing. But as you can see it's nice and clean. Next up is the solar fan. Again, this is something you should really plan right from the beginning. If you are making an A-frame, I strongly recommend you plan for a vent in one or both ends of the ceiling take the hot air out in the summer. Unfortunately I had, yes, I had a quite a heck of a time just getting a six inch hole through the top here. I mean there's not a lot of room as it is but I had screws and nails and and studs and all sorts of stuff. I had already finished all the trim on the inside and the outside. I had to take it all off and unfortunately on the outside as you can see here I'm working right above that you know $700 custom window <laughs> which was a bit stressful. However, in the end, uh, I got the vent installed and it worked really well. The battery didn't last all night, but uh, almost if it was sunny all day, and it did a great job of venting out all the hot, humid air out of the top of the loft so that it was nice and cool when it was time to, to go to sleep. So we kind of debated on whether or not we should build a bathroom in here, and in the end we decided to go for it. We can always change our minds later. It's just a basic 2x4 framed walls and a pre-hung interior door. And I screwed those all down, so if we want to take it out later we can. I also built that small wall across the, the whole left side of the A-frame. And we'll just seal that off and use it for storage. Gotta love pre-hung doors. Make things a lot easier. And I ended up boarding these walls up using the same boards that I use for all the rest of the, the inside. And I did put sound insulation in. Uh, and that might have been wishful thinking with that door. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I would recommend not doing that. 
If you're worried about sound in the bathroom, then probably a loud fan is the best way to go. And I did pick up one of those, so next year or next trip out, I will install that fan. We decided to use sawdust composting toilets, which is basically just a bucket. You just put sawdust in before and after you go to the washroom, and once it's full, you take it out, put it in the compost, and carry on. Super cheap, super easy, fast, and I was surprised at how little odor there is. Um, we haven't done enough, we haven't used it enough to be sure yet, but it seems to be working out really well. I also purchased a urine diverter, which you can see on the right toilet. And that allows you to put in a drain pipe if you wanted to make the urine go somewhere else. Now, I looked at three options here. I definitely did not want to put in a septic bed. I'm not even sure if I'd be allowed to this close to the ocean. So the composting toilets are the first option. So this is the simplest, or you can purchase an actual composting toilet with an electric fan uh, and, and an exterior unit. But based on all the reviews I've read and the feedback I've heard from people, they can work well. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. It's hard to get parts, hard to get service. Uh, it sounded like too much trouble to me. The third option, which I really like, is the incinerating toilets. And there's quite a few companies that build those now, even Canadian companies that build them. Um, you're looking at six, $7,000 and you need a fair bit of power, but what you end up with is a, a little tray full of dust that you just scatter in the forest every once in a while. Seems like the best solution, uh, but it's pricey and you need that, that power. So we figured we'd start with this and can easily upgrade from here to whatever we want. So there is some nice springs on the cliff that flow out down into the ocean. And so I ran this one inch PEX from a bucket that the spring runs into up to the green shed and installed a pump in there. We also built that little outdoor counter with a sink so that we could do our dishes and if we want to use a camp stove, basically an outdoor kitchen, which, uh, which is great when it's not raining and there aren't too many bugs. So the only problem was that uh, I couldn't get the pump primed last year. I was filling it up with water from the top and there was just, I could not get the air out. There was air all the way through that one inch PEX because it wasn't perfectly flat. Um, and there's nothing I could do about that really. So I did some research on the internet and uh, got some great advice from somebody that installs pumps like this. And uh, what you do is you just, you have a stop valve on the intake anyway, so that water can't run out. Um, and then you just add in another valve and you put in a T and then you hook up a hand pump at the bottom that goes into the same water source. That way you can actually pump water up from the bottom all the way through the line until it gets to the pump. And then of course it starts to overflow, but at that point you can turn the pump on and you got a perfect prime because it pushes all the air out as it goes. Um, so that worked really well and it was uh, very nice to have running water. One of our friends also gave me this barrel that uh, I used to make a shower. So I just added a line up there so you could turn it on and fill it up with water. I painted it dark brown so that when the sun shines on it, it would warm the water up. And I purchased one of those uh, pull valves so that when you pull it, the water comes out. You can have a nice, fairly warm shower, much warmer than the direct spring water. And that worked quite well. Now, once I had the water to the shed, I decided, and once it was working, I decided that I should run it right to the A-frame. So I had a couple of options. Most of the videos I watched, people would rent a trencher, and Home Depot did rent a trencher that I could have got, but you need, a, you need your own truck, you need ramps. Thing is huge, it's heavy, and I wasn't sure if it was even gonna go through the rocky ground out by the A-frame. So in the end, I just, bought a $60 pickaxe and uh, got about, hmm, I'd say at least six, seven hours of serious workout. Down here, closer to the shed, you can see the soil isn't too bad, but up towards the A-frame, it was, it was hard. Mostly rock and sand with, uh, with clay, dried clay. So eventually I got the trench deep enough, ran a three quarter inch PEX water tube and some cable some low voltage cable and also some other buried cable 
so that I could get electricity at the A-frame. Just just uh, 30 amps, two 15 amp circuits, enough to run the refrigerator and, and the lights. So the other item that I wanted to discuss was the foundation. And there was a lot of comments, uh, people worried about the fact that we built the foundation and the A-frame on frozen ground. Uh, but I can say after almost a year and a half that none of these none of these deck blocks have moved at all. Um, everything's still perfectly level. And if if it did shift, um, jacking it up and putting in shims would be easy enough anyway. But as I say, it's gone through a full winter uh, and two summers, and it it seems fine. So I decided to build a ramp on the back. Uh, we didn't build the railing on the front, so I had lots of leftover pressure-treated lumber. And we really wanted the A-frame to be accessible anyway, and this was the easiest way to do it. Turned out quite well, actually. So that brings us to the end of part two in our A-frame video series. It's been quite an adventure over the last two seasons. And we're really looking forward to spending more time here in the future. I've really enjoyed reading your comments and uh, answering your questions, so please keep it up. And if you have anything you want to know, just put it in the comments, and I will do my best to respond as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll